Hello guys and welcome to part two of the market structure lesson and I've got a lot of messages coming through about that it's it's a bit it's a lot to take on and it's really hard to understand and I understand that and like I said the further we get into the course it will make more sense but you know I wanted to add another lesson an exercise lesson just so um, you can get your heads around it maybe a bit easier and it's going to help you so just before we get in, into that I just want to go through again um, the basics on what we're trying to achieve and you know how each time frame is talking to itself so i'm just going to go through this slowly so we understand so here we have the daily time frame okay i know our main time frames are the four hour 50 minute and the one minute but i'm just putting in the daily time frame just to make you understand a bit easier how each time frame talks to each other so our swing structure on the daily time frame is bullish we've had a breaker structure here price is pushing up after a breaker structure, what do we expect? We expect a pullback to facilitate um, this breaker structure. So the internal structure here needs to turn bearish to facilitate the daily pullback. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to sell um, up here for the pullback to start and buy down here to continue the trend. Again, I know our main time frame we're going to be using to enter to find our POIs and where we trade off is the M15, but I'm just I'm just trying to make you understand how each time frame talks to itself, talks to itself, and how each time frame works. Don't worry about you won't be buying on the daily time frame or the four hour time frame. It's all going to be from the 15 minute, and then we're using the one minute for our lower time frame entries. But I'm just making you understand maybe a bit easier. So, like I said, we have a daily bullish breaker structure what do we expect we expect to pull back so the daily internal structure needs to turn bearish to facilitate that daily breaker structure okay so if we move down to the four hour time frame now so the daily swing is bullish and the internal on the daily is bearish the four hour swing is bearish and that the four hour swing is bearish to facilitate the daily pullback so the internal structure on the daily is the four hour swing structure and then down here we have the internal four hour structure has turned bullish to facilitate the four hour pullback so i hope that makes sense so the daily structure is bullish the internal daily has switched bearish to facilitate the daily pullback and the four hour swing has switched bearish to facilitate the daily pullback and then the internal four hour structure has turned bullish to facilitate the four hour pullback so i hope that makes sense now we're going to move down to the 15 The M15 swing structure has turned bearish to facilitate the four hour internal pullback and the M15 internal has switched bullish to facilitate the M15 pullback. So again, I know it's probably really hard to get your head around and it's confusing, but let's go from the top again. So the daily swing structure is bullish and the internal um, structure is bearish and the internal structure has switched bearish to facilitate the daily pullback so then four hour the four hour swing structure is bearish to facilitate the daily pullback the four hour internal structure is bullish to facilitate the four hour pullback The 15 swing structure is bearish to facilitate the four hour internal pullback and the M15 internal structure is bullish to facilitate the M15 swing pullback. So I hope that makes sense. That's how each time frame talks to itself. After a break of structure, we, and we anticipate a pullback and each pullback um, corresponds with each time frame as we move down. So now what we're going to do is, is we're going to go, we're going to do an exercise where we're going to go through um, bar replay and we're going to map our swing structure, internal structure and fractal structure 
um, as price moves on and you can follow along with me on your charts. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the exercise and go on to EURUSD on the four hour chart and move price to Tuesday, the 18th of July, 2023 at 6 a.m. So all we're using the four hour time frame for is where is what phase we're in and what direction the swing structure is. So straight away, we can see that there's a break structure right here to the upside. What do we do after that? We find our strong low. Where's the lowest point? Lowest point is around here. Let's just check where it is pretty much equal. So just do it on this one. So that is our four hour. Four hour strong low. And what have we got? So the four hours bullish, we've had a four hour swing breaker structure. And what do we anticipate after a four after a swing breaker structure is a pullback. So the swing structure on my four hour is bullish. Let's move to the 15 minute and do our swing structure on the 15 minute. It's a bit all over the place on here. Best thing to do is just find where structure has broke. So if we start over here, so if we start over here, did price break structure here? No, because it wasn't a candle closure. Where's the nearest area that price broke structure? Here. Price broke structure to the downside here. Let's just quickly go through this just to get to where we are currently at. So where's our high? Our high is there. So this would have been our strong M15 high. But as you can see, price broke structure over here because there's a candle closure. So if we mark that off, get the low. So our low, lowest point here, our lowest point was down there. So, um, 15 break of structure. Oh, no, no, wrong. That's our strong low. Sorry. So, M15 strong low. At the time, price would have pulled down here. So, this would have been our weak high, which price broke structure there. So let's get rid of that. And if we we can see which is the lowest point, and I need to pull the box down, but we'll do it just for the purpose of the exercise. Our strong low is here. And then price didn't really pull back. I'm not going to class these as pullbacks because they need to be significant pullbacks. Price needs to pull well into here. So these ones we wouldn't mark our high because they're not it's not a it's not a big enough pullback. You need to see them big pullbacks, which here, that's our pullback there. So our strong low is there. And our weak high is here. So the M15 is bullish. The M15 swing structure is bullish. And the four hour swing structure is bullish. But the four hour four hour is our is to know what phase we are in. So what phase are we in right now? We're in the push phase of the breaker structure. We don't want to be buying and we don't want to be selling yet because we haven't had our confirmation that the pullback has started. But what we can do is is we can use the M15 swing structure to know when the four hour pullback has started. So I think the confusion that people are getting is that like I'm doing everything in one time frame. I'm just if you can do everything on one time frame, then it's easier to do it on the other time frames. But for this example, for what we're going to do now, we'll go through it how I use the time frames in conjunction with the other time frames. So the four hour time frame, we're bullish, we're waiting for that pullback. To know when this pullback has started, I want to see the M15 swing structure change to, to bearish. It's currently bullish. Once I get a break of this low, I know that a four hour pullback has started. 
So if we let's just play price on, see what happens. So at the moment, at the moment, price is bullish and because of the four hour, I'm not going to be looking to trade on the M15 yet because I know that we're, we're we've had a breakage structure on the four hour and we're anticipating a pullback. So I don't want to do anything until that pullback is, is confirmed. And remember, swing structure needs to change. Um, swing structure needs to break structure. So once a, a candle closure, once you have a candle closure beneath here, then that is confirmed that the internal structure on the four hour is bearish. Swing structure on the M15 has switched bearish. That confirms our inter that conf that confirms the four hour pullback has started. So we're still in this range. So here we go. So now we've had a candle closure on the M15 swing structure. The swing structure has changed to bearish. We get our box. It's obvious where it is, but we're just for the purpose of the exercise, move that up. Swing structure has changed to bearish. So what does this become? This becomes our strong high. So let's review, take this away. M15 is now bearish. Swing The M15 swing structure is now bearish. What is that to facilitate? That is to facilitate the four hour pullback. So again, we're not on the, the four hours, just, we're just using the four hour to know um, what phase we're in and, and, and then the M15 we use as our POIs and our immediate bias. And we use the higher time frame to know exactly like where we should be trading and what we should be doing. And then the M15 is for our POIs and our immediate bias. So four hour swing is bullish. We've had that um, internal structure on the M15 switch to switched bearish to facilitate the four-hour pullback. And if we if we go onto the 15, and I just get this stuff to show on the four-hour, so, so this is a four-hour. This is a M15 breaker structure. Let's see what it is. high as well so the swing structure on the m15 is the internal structure on the four hour so that's how that's how the m15 and the four hour talk to each other we use the m15 to know exactly when the pullback started and We'll get into more of this when we're in the supply and demand lesson, which is the next one. But we can use this to know how far we can start selling off. We want to start buying by the EQ or below. So we know, and if I show this on the, it's already on the minute. If I show this on the minute, this gives us an idea of how, how far down we can sell. You know, got quite a long way to go. So if we just follow structure, we now have a significant pullback here. So we can add this. That's our week. So we're following um, following the four hour internal structure, but on the M15 swing structure is bearish. And if I was in a trading day right now, what I'd be doing is I know I'm in the pullback phase on the four hour time frame. That's my higher time frame. I'll be looking for sell trades and I'd be looking for sell trades in 15 minute POIs above the EQ. So that's pretty much the only one. There are, there are other ones, but there's very wicky over here. Again, this is going to all make sense when we get into the supply and demand lesson. Let's just play price on. What I'd we'll be doing is when price is in my supply level, supply area, I'd be moving on to the minute time frame and finding a liquidity entry model, which again, we'll be getting into those lessons when we get to them. So you know exactly what to do when you get to these levels. But I wouldn't be looking to trade in any supply level below the EQ. When we're, when we're, when we're, set, when we're, in, a, when we're in a downtrend, on the swing on the M15, 
I'm looking to trade in the EQ or above and price is pulled up to the EQ and now it's starting to sell off again. So there we go. Then we have our swing breaker structure on the M15. Four hour internal is still pushing down. So what's that? 15 breakers, M15 breaker structure. I need to sort out my list because uh, I can never find where they are. <laughs> Remember, get rid of everything so you know where you're trading from. Get the box. Where's the highest point? This is now our strong high. So, looking at that four hour. So, the pullback on the four hour is only just starting. And like I said, we're selling off into the discount. Of the four hour swing range so we use the four hour to know how far we need to go and then and stuff like that and the m15 is just for our immediate bias and our poi so our immediate bias is our swing range is bearish and it's facilitating the four hour swing pullback still so i want to buy i want to sell that the four hour pullbacks and i want to buy the four hour continuations if i'm in a if i'm in an uptrend but you can the M15, but that's what we are selling the continuation on the MT15. But you can buy, you can um, buy the pullbacks. You can buy the you can buy the M15 pullbacks. So same on the four hour after a breaker structure. What do we expect a pullback? The same with the M15. We had a breaker structure here. So what we can do is, is is we can buy up until up until the premium on the M15. And what do we need to do to do that? We need to wait. For a change of character to give us that sort of start of the pullback of the M15, but an iBoss confirms it. So, so where's our change of character? Sometimes your change of character is going to be all up there, so you need to wait for a new structure to be made. But sometimes you can, sometimes you'll miss them. But you know, it's all about knowing where you are and what price is doing. Um, so this is the M15 week. We can, we want to be, so this one's pretty clean. We want to be trading in the EQ or above. Where's the first supply level above? Again, we'll get into this, how to mark supply and what supply areas are the best to use. Here is one. Price is already putting up, so there's not really anywhere that we can get into a nice buy up here. It's, it's, it's getting close to that area, so. So I wouldn't take a trade like this, but let's just, so we can see, this is how you can, your internal structure on the M15. So we have an IBOS on the M15 here. Where's our low? This is how you follow internal structure. And this is like where it gets a bit advanced. It's maybe hard to understand, but you just focus your, on your swing structure on your four hour and your 15 minute, then um, then you'll be fine. You know, this the internal stuff, when you get more in depth, you'll pick it up more as we get through the course. But what, what I do as well is I like to keep track of my internal structure. So I know what ranges I'm in on the internal side of things. So our internal... So because... Our M15 swing is bearish, but because the internal, now my internal structure is shifted bullish to facilitate the M15 pullback. So because the swing structure is bearish, the top, the high is strong and the and the low is weak because we expect the swing structure to respect um, the direction and pull up into the strong area, push down, take out the weak. So if we're internally bullish, we expect the low to stay strong and the top is weak. To continue the um, bullish order flow in between the swing structure, but because we we're pulling up into the EQ and you know the swing range isn't very it's not very big, 
if we had if we had um an iboss lower down here then we could probably take buys up into this area but you know it's quite we're quite tight now so we're not going to get the risk to reward up up to here so i would just i'm just showing you how i would if it was a bigger swing range then yeah we could possibly look at buys you know we got let's see this um let's see the price pulls back anyway and then we can mark the week high and see what happens but let's see So price is very, do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not pulled back that much, and it's we're in the EQ now. So if price would have, if price was here to pull down like this and then go back, then do you know what I mean? We could probably maybe get into a trade down here. But again, as we go through the course and we and we learn more about um, how the strategy works and with supply and demand overlapping everything else, it will start to make more sense. So just for now, just focus on your swing structure. Do swing structure on your four hour and your m15 and that the swing structure is key with this the internal structure is for us just to know when pullbacks are happening on the different time frames so on the four hour when we get when we want to know when an internal pullback is happening on the four hour we move down to the m15 and see where our swing structure what our swing structure is doing so so i hope that's helped you to understand market structure a bit easier i know it is confusing and i know that it it takes a while to understand this stuff you know so you've got to just Keep watching the videos um, just watch them as many times as you can and just ask as many questions as you can as well. If you have anything that you need to ask me, just I'll just ask in the group. I'm always ready to answer questions and I'm going to, wherever you ask me, I'll put in the next lesson to put it onto the charts as well to make you understand even better. So just to recap on what we're trying to achieve. So we're using the four hour time frame for a higher time frame narrative and to know what phase we're in. We use the M15 for our immediate bias and POIs and we use the one minute time frame for our lower time frame entries. Our swing structure is our main structure that we follow and our internal structure we use to know when pullbacks are starting and ending and our change of characters we're going to be using on the one minute time frame for our entries and we use them on our normal time frames just to know when pullbacks might be starting. So if the four hour is if the four hour swing structure is bullish and we're waiting for that pullback to get catch shorts into the discount, we use the M15 to see what the swing structure is doing. And usually the swing structure on the M15 will switch bearish to facilitate the four hour pullback. We can then use the 15 minute to buy. To, sorry, we can use the M15 um, to sell the pullback into the discount. We can then use the M15 again for the swing structure on the M15 to shift back to bullish. That's when we know that the pullback has finished and we can start buying to take out the weak swing highs. So hope that makes sense, guys. I really, really do. Again, if you have any questions, please um, speak to me in the group. Um, also from the first lesson, the group has now changed. I am the we have a premium service now in the Discord. This this um, course is always going to be free. It's always going to be on YouTube. But if you do want um, to get access to my analysis and um, my weekly forecasts, and you need a bit more help with your trading, then you can purchase my premium service. At the moment, while I'm making this course, it is ten pounds a month. So if you join now, you'll get £10 a month for, for life. Like that's all you have to pay. But if you join the group, if you join the premium service after I finish this course, then it's going to be £30 a month. So if you get in, if you get in now, guys, it's £10 a month and you'll keep that price forever. So jump on that if you want and I can help you a bit further than you already need. But I hope this lesson has helped you. Again, please um, like and comment and Subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about trading. I have so many more courses on um, this channel. We've got beginner courses, um, SMT courses. But this course I'm currently going through right now is the, is what I use. This is what I use every day. This is this this is the um, this is my strategy and how I trade the forex market. So I hope you enjoy that lesson, guys, and I will see you in another one for on Friday. That will be the supply and demand lesson. Cheers, guys.